So obviously we're going into reporting season for the major banks. The sort of the key thing I think you should be thinking of is I think the earnings have peaked for the banks. They're going to be weaker in the second half of 23 and, and then further declines into FY24. Uh, I like to use this uh, slide that I've put up there just to help you sort of frame your thinking around the major banks. So um, if we start on the left-hand side and just think about the earnings, um, and look, all the banks that have like set their uh, their P and L up very much the same way. So, uh, if we look there at the net interest income, that makes up 80, 85 percent of a bank's revenue, right? So that's the the product of their interest earning asset basis and their net interest margin or NIM. So if we think about that interest earning asset base first, look, uh, loans make up about 75 percent of that for Westpac and for for CBA, so the the more sort of retail focused banks. Um, <clears throat> more like sort of 65 to 75 percent for ANZ and NAB. The remainder of that asset base is, is liquid assets such as government securities. So look, on the loan side of things, we can get a good read on how they've been performing, at least in the domestic market, through the monthly data releases that APRA and RBA put out. Um, remember that all the banks also have exposure to New Zealand um, with the highest offshore exposure, including New Zealand being with, uh, with ANZ Bank. So now getting into investment view, so no uh, changes to ratings. So let me just talk you through what I'm thinking here. So I've got an ad on Westpac, although I've got to say my conviction on this, uh, this ad is certainly uh, reduced. Their cost out program has turned into cost growth. So it's just uh, um, certainly pulled some of the upside valuation out of my numbers. Still a 12% potential return. Look, Westpac has a similar asset base, funding mix, and domestic retail con uh, concentration as the premium price CBA. However, its growth, its profitability, its ROE have been significantly weaker than that stronger competitor, its larger competitor. And that's um, ultimately reflected in, in Westpac's trading multiples, right? Um, and its high cash yield. But if Westpac can materially improve its business performance, and I'm not saying this is, uh, you know, it's it's certainly got significant risk of disappointment here. But if it can, then the investment, uh, the investment in this stock could deliver uh, attractive returns as the share price re-rates upwards and the cash returns left for investors. So the thing I'm really thinking about here is the relationship between price to book and ROE. So Westpac's is a hell of a lot lower than CBA's and, it, and its peers, actually. If it's able to improve that, it should see price to book improve, should see the share price re-rate. Um, in terms of what I've done with my forecasts, I've downgraded those. I'm now sitting below consensus for second half 23 and above an FY24. Westpac reports on the 6th, trades X on the 9th, uh, pays its dividend on the 19th of December. So just in terms of what you're likely to see with the first half result, I'm expecting a 25% decline in cash earnings. Now that looks horrendous, but what you've got to realise is that Westpac has been going through an um, asset sale program. Um, so when we make adjustments to uh, the notable items that it came through in the, in the uh, uh, first half of 23 and what I think is what they've described in the second half of 23, I think that decline is going to be more like 11%. Um, so certainly larger than its peers, um, uh, but that partly is because of that, that, uh, that sale agenda they've had. Uh, also forecasting the dividend to rise 6% for Westpac to 74 cents. So that puts it on a 10 times PE, one times price to book and a 7% cash yield. ANZ, I've got a hold on it, but I'm very much uh, warming to this name, 9% um, potential return. So look, ANZ differentiates itself from its major bank peers through its institutional banking services that are increasingly leveraged to growth in its high ROE platform, uh, payment platforms businesses. It's got more international exposure than its peers, particularly in New Zealand and also in US dollars. And it's got a smaller exposure to the highly competitive domestic um, mortgage market. Although having said that, it has been growing very quickly recently in that market. So it trades on cheap multiples, got an attractive cash yield. My main concern here is that um, they seem to have a desire to pursue acquisitions. I mean, some called Bank was one of those, but we might also remember they were considering an acquisition at MYOB. So I'm just worried that you know, that acquisition agenda could be value destructive for shareholders and, and or sort of increase the risk profile of the business. Um, you've got me, you see uh, the, the forecast downgrades that are put through, I've just got, I'm just now sort of sitting just mildly below consensus for the next couple of years. So they're uh, reporting on the 13th of November. Um, X16th dividend 22nd. 
I'm expecting a 3% decline in their earnings coming through for the second half, uh, steady dividend at 81 cents. So what does that mean in terms of multiples? Uh, it's trading on 10 to 11 times PE, about a 1.1 times price to book, cash yield of 6.5%. The other one with a, uh, a, um, a statutory result coming through during the reporting pe period is NAB. So I've got to hold on that, 8% uh, potential return. So it differentiates itself from its major bank peers through its leading SME relationship banking franchise. So attractive yield, uh, capacity for even more buybacks after the one that it has announced. However, the worry to me is we're seeing through the NAB um, uh, data, monthly data numbers, slowing loan and deposit growth, uh, very much um, competitor intensity in its key markets. So all the major banks have basically said, we want to attack the business banking market. And you know, CBA in particular has also said we want to attack that, um, that SME uh, market. So also the other thing with that exposure to the business banking in Australia, I suppose a weakening economy, um, and I, you know, I talked about those uh, higher insolvencies, um, that could impact its business banking side of things. And also it's, it's facing sort of some accelerated cost growth. So on my forecast, it's trading on 11 to 12 times PE, uh, one and a half times book. So it's certainly stepped up ahead of ANZ and Westpac, cash yield of 5.9%. Um, these certainly aren't in the domain of CBA um, on premium multiples, but it does screen more expensive than those other two banks. Albeit it is justified because it has managed to lift its ROE above where its competitors, it's, uh, sorry, where ANZ and, um, um, and Westpac are. So look, you forecast downgrades for me, see me sitting about one to 5% ahead of consensus for FY23 to 25. And that's largely due to me thinking they're going to have lower uh, credit and payment charges uh, than what the um, market's expecting. NAB reports on the 9th, trades X on the 14th, pays its divvy on the 15th of December. I'm expecting a 6% a decline in second half earnings uh, and a steady dividend at 83 cents. Um, final one, and I know I've uh, spoken for a long time here, but um, I, I definitely do need to touch on CBA. So uh, hold retained on that stock, 6% potential return. So it's going to report not its um, statutory result, but it's a trading update, Q1 trading update on the 14th of November. It won't release its statutory until February the 14th next year for the first half. So investment view here, look, without a doubt, um, no, not just Australia's largest bank, but compared to its peers, it's got the highest ROE, lowest cost of capital, leading tech, largest pos uh, position in the residential mortgage market. And when you dig into the data there, it's also got the lowest risk structure to that portfolio. Um, more owner occupied and P&I loans uh, relatively than the other banks, um, which is particularly important for, for credit risk weighted assets. It's got the largest low cost uh, deposit base and it's got a greater skew to households than business um, deposits. So have a look in the pack uh, there's some really interesting data on why that's so important. Um, and it's got a loyal retail and, and customer um, base. So the thing is, you know, it's such a good bank, but investors are paying for that quality via way higher earnings multiples and asset-based multiples and lower dividend than its peers. So it's trading on 16 to 17 times PE, 2.3 times book, 4.6% cash yield. So what you'll see in the numbers, like I've downgraded FY23, not much of a change to the other years. So it sees me sort of sitting broadly in line with consensus. I'm currently forecasting CBA's cash earnings to decline by about 5% for my 24 and have a steady dividend in, uh, of $4.50 um, uh, for FY24 also.